making an earthquake with this tree, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go on the other side now. Shake, rattle, and roll. Because if I got a surprise for you, come on in here. Get into my office here. Come on, pull up a chair. Okay, come a little closer, folks. Get in here. All right, this is where it's going to be happening this morning. Good morning. I am Gary Walker, the tree whisperer, up and down, in and out, over, around, and through. So, our task this morning is we're going to take, this is what's called uh, an ornamental pear tree or decorative pear tree, which means um, that it's kind of a pear, but it doesn't produce any fruits. So in the spring, because this tree is a fully deciduous tree, meaning that it will lose its leaves in the fall, uh, in the spring, uh, it puts out thousands of really beautiful little white flowers so that the tree is completely covered in snow. It looks fabulous. Uh, and usually in a fruiting tree, you'll go from the flower to the fruit, but in this case, you go from the flower to the leaf. So the problem, this is a really old tree. Uh, the homeowner is a really cool guy. He loves nature. Both he and his wife are totally nature oriented. They're mellow people. They love their trees, but they'd like to capture some more sunlight in the front yard. So when I came out recently to do a health appraisal to analyze this tree, to see what we could do to improve the situation on a safety level and an aesthetic level, I quickly realized that these two huge trunks, you can see if you were to put a vertical, a perfect vertical uh, line right there, the tree is leaning tremendously in one direction. So instead of being 180 degrees, the tree is really a 90 degree tree, meaning there's nothing balancing on the other side. So if you look at Lady Justice with the scales, that would be like one arm, one arm of Lady Justice is missing. And so all of the weight, all of the tension of this tree now is placed on the roots on the backside, which presents an engineering uh, dilemma at this point now. So that uh, if the soil were to get loose during a big rainstorm or a root were to break, this entire tree would heave over by the roots. So my plan that I came up with is to remove these two gigantic trunks and then feature this pretty much vertical tree here, lace it out and make a whole new tree out of this. It's kind of radical because these things have been here for, I don't know, 20 plus years, the owner said. That's going to bring in more sunlight into here. They'll have a real front yard at that point. And then they'll have a real pretty tree up here. So it's going to be a real radical departure. And then, uh, Nate, if you'll pan around a little bit to this tubodanthus right here, I'm also going to work on this tubodanthus here. So this is called tubodanthus. Uh, sometimes you'll go to Home Depot or your big box store and you'll buy a little house plant called a chiffleur. Kind of cute, great indoor plant. It's in the same family, except that the leaf on this is much bigger. So it's got a nice, long, pendulous, long, narrow leaf. Well, the chiffleur is about, you know, an eighth of this size, and that's the one you'd keep as a house plant. So this one I'm gonna restructure as well, because you can pan up there, Nate, you can see a lot of it is touching the eaves and the roof. So I'm gonna restructure this tree, get it off and away from the house, and uh, kind of bring it, compress it, uh, so that it's not just running akimbo everywhere. So we're gonna get to work right now and we'll we'll see you on the other side of this project and we'll see how it came out. Bye. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm ready to go to work now. Got my long sleeve shirt on, got my glasses, got my earplugs, got my hat on. So I'm ready to tackle this tree now. So I'm gonna just start removing some of the smaller branches. We'll work our way through it. So uh, hang in there, uh, pull up a seat, grab some popcorn and your favorite beverage. Now, uh, let me just say, ladies and gentlemen, so this is a special saw. This is called a limbing saw. It's much smaller than the other one you've seen me use in some of my other videos. So. As you can see, I can hold and manipulate this quite easily uh, with just one hand. Now, it's got a smaller chain on it. Uh, it's balanced very well uh, for maximum control, and it's perfect for just limbing out small to medium-sized limbs. So we call this a limbing saw.
just so you know, you notice when I'm doing a heavier limb, I'm standing back and away. And as soon as I see it going, I even step back a little bit because wood uh, and, and the height has a difference. The higher it up that you are, wood can bounce like a ball. I mean, incredibly so. So uh, the higher up it is, the more you want to stay away from any falling wood because it'll bounce. It can go in any direction at any moment. <laughs> one of the leaders gone so we'll do the same thing to this and then I'll work on the remaining vertical leader we'll check with you back. keep it going keep it going so I just want to say ladies and gentlemen so you notice I'm not just willy-nilly making random cuts they're all intuitive they're rather quick I've been doing this for decades so I'm going I'm cutting just outside the branch bark collar on the crotch down here so I'm angling out the, the cut so that uh, it'll heal up properly. So that's the method to the madness. Now just, just keep it going. So I'm going to just do a couple of quick structural cuts above here. So watch out. And then Nate's going to cut and paste this whole thing together. So here we go. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're on the scene here. Pull up a chair, come on in. We're gonna work on this uh, little tubodanthus, which isn't so little, it's got quite a bit of girth. It's been here for 20 plus years. It's all over the facade, the fascia, the roof of this uh, house. So we're gonna structurally, uh, strategically remove some branches. I'm gonna restructure this for beauty, safety of the house. So I'll be pulling out some of these laterals. I'll be pulling out a few up over there. So you can just kind of follow me along. <laughs> So that's most of the structural work with uh, the chainsaw. Now I'm going to come in with my pole saw and I'll just refine this. But uh, looks a lot cleaner and neater, huh? Like getting a good haircut. <laughs> so we'll see it when we're done. Okay, so now I'm just kind of opening up the crown. I'm just going to maybe take 20, 30% out, get a little bit of dappled light coming through it now, finish it off. Catch me working out there. Come on in. All right, we're wrapping up this uh, segment of uh, the tree whisperer, working on the... Uh, uh, decorative pear tree. So uh, we've got this thing done. O homeowner came out. Madeline, absolutely. Madeline, Steve, they absolutely loved it. They flipped out. Fabulous. Even had the neighbor coming from next door. Came on over here, dragged her husband kind of by the collar, made him look at it. They're totally thumbs up on it. They love the new look. So now they've recaptured their front yard. We have a real tree, laced out, restructured. And bonus. We've got the tubodanthus over here looking really good, so let's have a look up here. Completely restructured. You can see all my major cuts, lots of them, dozens and dozens of cuts all the way from the building now. No rodent conveyor. Looks handsome, and it now complements the other tree. So thanks again for tuning in to yet again another episode of the Tree Whisperer. 
and we look forward to seeing you on the other side in our next episode. Thank you. Bye-bye.